Looks like we got a keeper in there. A couple of them. here in Winchester Bay, Oregon, and I'm gonna be going crabbing for Dungeness Crab. So, it's, it's evening time. Best time to fish for crab is when the tide is coming in. So the tide's coming in right now. We're about two hours from high tide. We get out and get set up. Today we're gonna to be using chicken legs. And the reason why we use chicken legs is because the seals don't like chicken legs. So they don't mess with your traps, but the crab love them. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go set up out here. We're gonna crab for the next few hours. I'm gonna take you along with me and uh, we're gonna see if we can get lucky today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be casting off on the shore side of the dock. And the reason why we're casting to the shore side of the dock is because the tide's coming in. And if we cast off on the inlet side of the dock, our crab traps get pulled underneath and it's really hard to pull them back up. So if you're dock crabbing, always keep in mind what direction that the tide is going so that it's not really difficult to pull your trap up when you wanna get it out of the water. Okay, so you can use little bait traps, but when you're using these square traps, the bait box actually takes up so much space in the trap that if you get a few crabs in there, that actually pries the doors open and they stay open. So I like to just zip tie them to the bottom. Not only that, I like the crabs to be able to tear them apart a little bit. I think that puts more debris in the water and attracts more crab. Now you notice I'm using these little square traps. The thing about these square traps for me, as being nomadic, I live in an RV, and space means everything to me. And so, are there, although there are better traps to use, these serve my purpose best. So, you may have your trap that you like to use better, good for you. Use those traps. If you are, you know, crunch for space, these work great, and they're really inexpensive, because you can fold them down and stick them in your trunk. You can put them anywhere. So, and also they also have the rings, the dip rings. But keep in mind, those are to be actively worked. Don't toss a ring out, unless it's a ring trap, but if it's a flat ring that, that dips, don't just toss it out and leave it sit because it's meant to trap them as you pull them up. So you kind of want to be active on that. You drop it down, wait 10 minutes, lift it up, attract the, tra the crab in, and then catch them. I see a lot of people throwing those on the dock and then walking away and then they come back and their bait's gone and they have no crab in their trap. So remember, the trap catches the crab. If left in the water, the ring needs to be actively worked. And it's not that far down, is it? All right, so the traps have been down for 20 minutes now. And like I said, we're using chicken legs so that the seals won't mess with it, but I haven't seen any seals around. So let's see what we got. If anything. Absolutely nothing. Oh. Let's get it back out there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Other side. 
right, let's see if this one's a little better off. Make sure that one's actually sitting on the bottom. Looks like we got a keeper in there. A couple of them. <clears throat> All right, so you can only keep the males. And the way you can tell a male is this little vent right here is long and thin like that. So that's a male. So now we have to measure it. Here in Oregon, you have to have them uh, they have to shell between that point and that point needs to be five and three quarter inches. So in other words, on a tr gauge between here and here. So definitely a keeper. I'm going to guess this one isn't. Now when you're going to hold a crab so you don't get pinched, best way I found is to actually grab the back two legs just like that then they won't actually pin pinch you this one way too small so we're gonna toss this one back and I'll let him keep that chunk of meat <laughs> and we got one more here this one is also a male That's a big one. And a keeper. Just like that. So, first trap up, two keepers. Okay, so this is gonna be the second time I pulled them up. It's been another 20 minutes. This trap last time got nothing. That trap had two keepers. So, if I don't have anything in this trap, I'm gonna move it. So let's see if I got anything. Well, there's crab in there, but I don't think any of them are keepers. Ooh, I'm losing a chicken leg. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Nope. Back in the water. He's got a mouthful of chicken. Nope. Okay, so this is a female. So if you look here, at the belly right here, that's what a female looks like. So even if you catch a really big female, it's not legal, you gotta throw those back. <laughs> No! All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this trap a little bit over that way and just see if I can do have some better luck. First though, let's check the other trap. Those guys look pretty small. If I had to guess, I'd say no. But, safe and sorry, Ooh. look at that. Not legal, just barely. And a female. All right, so I'm gonna strap down the bait, make sure it's secure. Throw it back out, another 20 minutes, and let's see what we got. Take a look at that right there real quick. All right, so we're gonna do our last pole. It's getting kind of dark here, and 
if you look, you can see that the tide's not moving. So we're at peak high tide right now. So let's see what we can get here. Look at that, nothing. All right, so we move this one. Let's see if it's different over here. Those look pretty small. I'm gonna say no. Nope. This, I'm gonna guess is a female. And I was right. And I could tell because of the color. Put it back on me. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now, it's pretty dark, I'm back at my RV, and we're gonna clean these crab. So I purchased this really cool thing, it's called the Crab and Crab Cleaner. You don't need to do one of these, you can just throw them in a pot and cook them for 20 minutes. This is kind of if you don't have a lot of space, or you've caught in a lot of crab, and um, your pot space is really small. So all you do is, this actually is kind of, it's a measurer too, but it's made out of metal, stainless steel actually so if you're using it you want to have a float on it and the company actually sells floats so it doesn't sink to the bottom when you're using it so what you do is you put it together this is a really humane way to kill the crab also so what we're going to do is we're going to take the crab what we're going to do is we're going to center this piece right down the middle right here okay so you put them on just like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to hit them and that's going to take them right down to the bottom like that crab is dead okay so now it's all the way up to the shell so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hold of the legs here and we're just going to peel it back just like that take the other side peel it back shake them off and that's how you clean a crab. Just rinse it out then, and you can cook them just like this. I'm gonna take this little piece right here, pull that off. Just like that, and you're all done. It's a quick, easy way to kill a crab and clean it. So we're gonna toss them in the pot here, and take the shell off, set them off to the side, and grab crab number two. Just like before, we're going to center them right on the rod there. Smack them down, just like that. We're going to grab the legs here, peel it back, grab the other legs, peel them back, and you've got clean crab. You shake them off, give them a quick rinse and you're ready to cook. You throw them in your pot, cook them for 20 minutes, and you're good to go. Another way you can tell when they're cleaned or when they're cooked too, if you do decide to cook the whole thing, is his the crab will actually turn a bright orange. But usually, you figure 20 minutes is a pretty safe bet. All right guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's adventure, and I'll see you next time on another nomadic fishing adventure.